Hello, everyone in the GRSS community, and thanks for coming back for another GRSS live webinar. I'm Brad Closa from IEEE TV. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. Uh, today, we have um, a special guest and a special topic. Uh, it's a little different than, than the, our usual technical presentations. Uh, today, uh, our guest speaker is Dr. Chien Du, who goes by Jenny. Uh, Jenny is an IEEE fellow who serves as professor with the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Mississippi State University. She's also the editor-in-chief of the IEEE Journal of Selected Topics on Applied Earth Observatories and Remote Sensing, which goes by the acronym JSTARS. Today, Jenny will give a presentation about the fact that IEEE has officially approved JSTARS to become a fully open access journal effective January 1st, 2020. She'll briefly review the current journal status and introduce its new features and the actions to be taken for its success in the open access era. Uh, as usual, uh, I just want to remind you that you can ask questions. There is a uh, form below the video player on the IEEE TV page that says, ask a question. You could type in your name, uh, what country you reside in and whatever question you have. And at the end of her presentation, which I believe will be shorter than our typical uh, GRSS webinar. So get your questions in uh, you know, soon if you have them. Uh, we'll go through as many of the questions as, as we can in the time allotted uh, and um, you know, address whatever uh, uh, thoughts you have. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jenny. Uh, thank you, Jenny, for being with us. And uh, please take it away. Thank you, Brad. Uh, this is, again, this is Jenny Du, uh, Chief Editor of JSTARS. You may know that uh, JSTARS uh, was established in 2008 and sponsored by the IEEE Geoscience and Remote Sensing Society, GISS. It is a hybrid journal, which means it publishes uh, both the regular papers and open access papers. Uh, for a regular paper, uh, it charges $200 uh, per page um, beyond the six-page limit. Uh, starting last year, uh, for non-IEEE GISS members, it charges uh, $230 uh, each overlands page. And if people want to publish as an OA, then the OA fee is $2,000. Uh, $45 on top of that overlands page charge and the color uh, figure charge. So you can see uh, that is very uh, expensive. Uh, the publication frequency uh, at the beginning, it was a quarterly journal, which means published uh, four issues a year. Uh, then later it became a bi-monthly. Since 2014, uh, it was a monthly journal publishing 12 issues a year. You can see the journal has been expanded uh, significantly. Our recent annual submissions is about 1,100 papers. Among these uh, submissions, about 70% uh, are regular papers and 30% are special issue uh, papers. You can see that uh, the special issue papers uh, are not that many because we don't have that many slots to uh, accommodate that many special issues. Uh, the statistics uh, from the average weeks from submission to e-publication um, is about 30 weeks, uh, the seven months. The median value uh, is about uh, 25 weeks. Um, from submission to the first uh, decision, it uh, takes about uh, 6.7 months. No, sorry, 6.7 weeks, so less than two months. The average acceptance rate um, is changed slightly, but uh, basically is less than 38%, which means every three papers, um, one accepted and two rejected. Average paper length uh, is 12.5 pages. So you can see majority papers uh, need to pay 
uh, $1,200 uh, overland page charge. Uh, this is the journal uh, scope. Uh, this is a very long uh, paragraph, but the key uh, sentence is the first one. The JSTAR addresses the growing field of applications in Earth observations and remote sensing, and also provides a venue for the rapidly expanding special issues. This is a journal description. Um, people can uh, find this description in the journal website. It provides more detailed uh, topics uh, that are relevant to this journal. So basically it's about applied papers on remote sensing and Earth observations. As for journal quality metrics, uh, the impact factor has been uh, fluctuated a lot uh, through these years. Um, in 2015, uh, there was a drop uh, because 2015, the IF is about citations uh, in 2013 and 2014. And you may know that since 2014, the number of issues has been expanded from six to 12. So number of papers are significantly increased. So this makes more difficult to maintain a high impact factor. As for uh, eigenfactor, it has been improved and increased uh, stably and uh, significantly. Uh, some people consider eigenfactor is more robust uh, than impact factor because eigenfactor not just considers um, the citations, it also considered which journals contributed to the citations. Those, those highly cited journals will uh, influence more than less cited journals. And also it removes self-citations. As for art uh, article inference score, AIS, uh, this basically is eigenfactor, but divided by the number of uh, published papers. So again, for the journals uh, published a uh, small amount of papers, it has a high chance to maintain a high number of, uh, high value of AIS. So you can see this AIS has a similar trend as IF, showing a drop in uh, 2015. So this is a journal ranking based on the 2018 impact factor uh, just released uh, last month. It includes uh, 30 remote sensing journals, all the journals um, with some kind of remote sensing component. So you will see the magazine uh, ranks the number one, uh, RSE number two, uh, TIGAS number four, remote sensing number seven, letters number 10 and J stars number 11. However, if based on this eigen factor, uh, I think remote sensing uh, becomes number one, ISE number two, TGAS number three, and J stars number four. Based on uh, the AIF, AIF Sorry. Uh, the J stars about uh, uh, no, the number nine. So if we consider all this ranking together, uh, on average, uh, J stars um, is a top 10 journal. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, it is a decent journal. However, it has a, a big room to improve. So how to improve? Um, in late 2017, the ADCOM committee of GISS uh, decided to change JSTARS to an uh, open access journal. Um, this was triggered by the fact that uh, European Research Council requires uh, its sponsored projects to publish uh, their results as OA 
by 2020. So after this one year effort, uh, eventually IEEE approved this change last month. So that's why uh, we are here. So just as will be a gold OA journal, um, a gold OA means the authors need to pay the publication cost. So each page, uh, each paper will be charged uh, one thousand uh, one thousand two hundred fifty dollars, um, with some financial support uh, from the IEEE GRSS, and obviously papers will publish online, uh, right after acceptance and made freely download downloadable upon uh, publication, and no hard copy issues will be printed. Uh, as for journal scope and description. Uh, they will remain as uh, what I show uh, before. So the big challenging is that uh, the IEEE requires OA journals to reduce the time from submission to e-publication to 12.5 weeks. So now it's about uh, uh, 30 weeks. So we need uh, some actions to make this happen. So what we're going to do is uh, each uh, manuscript will allowed to be revised only once, no matter uh, the decision is a major or minor revision. And currently we allowed two times uh, major revision and without any a limit about the number of revisions. And also we are not going to use a decision of reject and resubmit. However, we allowed a rejected paper uh, to be resubmitted twice. So every time the authors resubmit a paper, uh, they need to uh, provide the submission history, uh, provide responses to previous review comments, and the highlighted changes has been made. So the papers can uh, back to the previous AE and the reviewers to make everything uh, faster. Also, a manuscript with major revision uh, will allow the authors uh, four weeks to complete. If the decision is a minor revision, then two weeks uh, to complete. So currently, uh, that times are two months and one month. So we're going to cut uh, by half. Um, as for review time, a uh, review still given three weeks to complete uh, a review for a paper after major revision, but two weeks uh, for a paper that after a minor revision. This uh, table uh, summarizes the time limits um, given in each stage of a review process. So that's about the number of days as a system set up uh, this is not the actual time, you know, a corresponding people complete this task. For instance, currently, I'm given seven days to uh, pre-screening a paper, but I basically don't need seven days. I will complete it within one or two days. But after this uh, journal flipped to OA, um, the system will set it as two days. Uh, a social editor given seven days to select uh, invited reviewers, but some AEs may, you know, only need zero days to complete that, but some may need more time than that. Uh, review accept denies uh, invitation, so seven days, but actually uh, this has lots of variation. Some reviews uh, never respond um, any. Uh, invitation. Uh, so this stage is, uh, has lots of uncertainty. If none of the reviews accept invitation, then the AE needs to invite additional reviews. So this takes this took this could take lots of time. And review uh, a review returns the uh, review three weeks. Uh, the AE makes the recommendation after uh, receiving enough reviews. Uh, currently, the system uh, gave seven days. Uh, later, we were given 
we will give three days. So I wish that social editors can log into his her account uh, more frequently to complete uh, these duties. So the AEs make decision uh, after receiving the recommendation. Then the authors prepare revision. So we're going to cut the time by half. Okay. After authors uh, submit the revision, uh, currently the AEs need to click the button in the system so the revision can be back to the previous reviews. If the AE, uh, the AEs do not back to the system in time, and then the revision could be in the system for some time. So we definitely need to improve this stage. And also uh, some reviews, some previous reviews do not check the revision again. Then the AE has to invite new reviews. So this also um, makes the review process very long. After JSTARS uh, became the uh, OA journal, we're going to set up the system such that the revision could be automatically back to the previous A uh, reviews. And also uh, we're going to um, make it clear that as long as a review agreed to uh, review the original submission, he or she also agreed to review the revision. So we don't need to uh, invite additional reviews, which uh, really makes the review process uh, very long. Okay, so after that, uh, the reviews are going to return the review either three weeks or two weeks. Okay, then make a recommendation again that I'm going to make the decision. So after adding um, all these dates together, you can see that uh, if this is really um, can be accomplished within these time limits, uh, the number of weeks can be reduced to uh, 14 weeks or 11 weeks. So as for uh, special issues, um, after uh, JSTARS be uh, became the open access journal, we will not have limitations on the number of special issues to be published. We, so we can accommodate as many as we want. Um, also, the SI papers can be published immediately after acceptance without waiting for other papers uh, being accepted. Uh, after all the accepted SI paper published, then the GEs will publish an editorial at the end. We also uh, given the GEs, um, they have the authority or description to recommend uh, three SI papers to be published for free. So anybody are uh, interested in a uh, proposed uh, SI, they can uh, download the template for the SI proposal from the website. And uh, in the template, there are some uh, requirement. We also uh, form an SI committee uh, to solicit, uh, review, and approve SI proposals. So in this way, we don't need to go back to the ADCOM committee to approve our proposals. So we can make uh, this process much faster. So as for the transition period in uh, 2019, uh, we already make the official announcement on the May, the 8th of May. So all the papers submitted before this date, we will make a great effort to process and publish these papers by the end of uh, this year. For all other papers submitted on and after this date, uh, depends on the review process. The paper uh, could be published this year or published next year, but the page charge will be different. So the acknowledgement email uh, of a paper submission has been changed. So you may have, uh, if you submit a paper recently, you may notice that uh, this paragraph has been added. 
So for any uh, author uh, who does not agree to pay this uh, corresponding page charge, um, they need to contact us immediately. So basically, uh, the paper with, will be uh, withdrawn. Okay, so basically that's my uh, presentation. Uh, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank our authors, reviewers, and associate editors for your contribution to JSTARS. As the journal uh, is going through significant changes, I wish you could contribute uh, to this journal. Uh, thank you. Thank you so very much. So with that, uh, I'm ready to uh, take any question. Uh, thank you, Jenny. Um, there were a bunch of questions that were pre-populated onto the IEEE TV uh, site, so I am going to take us over there. Uh, and I suppose, now I, I think since most of these were pre-populated, a lot of them I think are, have been answered by your presentation, but I want to go through them all just to make sure there's nothing you want to clarify. So we'll start from the bottom. Uh, where Wenzi Liao from Belgium uh, has several questions. He's glad to hear that uh, JSTARS will be open access. Uh, and he has three questions. How many days will be given to AEs for decision making? Uh, I think you had a chart that explained that pretty well. Uh, how many days will allow reviewers to return their comments? Uh, I, I think we addressed that. And then uh, are there similar incentives as MDPI, uh, which I am unfamiliar with, but maybe you can give some clarity on that. Okay, uh, I think uh, Wen Zhi is uh, talking about uh, the review incentive as MDPI remote sensing. Uh, I think that is a very good question. Um, I believe our uh, ADCOM committee and the publication team uh, have been aware of uh, this type of request. Um, we really want to, you know, uh, motivate our uh, reviewers to uh, provide, uh, uh, you know, to review our papers. Uh, however, we need to uh, double check our financial situation and also the policy of IEEE. And currently we uh, have our uh, best review awards. Um, in addition, if we have some additional uh, action, uh, for uh, you know the uh, incentive action, uh, we will make um, as soon as possible, and we will let this community know as soon as possible. Okay, great. Uh, and then uh, Kun Tan in China, uh, how much will we pay for each paper while our institute has bought the IEEE database? I think you probably covered costs, but then is there a discount coupon for the reviewer? Not sure if uh, you might have an answer for that. Uh, okay, I think that for the first question, um, I think uh, as soon as JSTARS um, becomes an OA journal, it will not be included in this IEEE package anymore. So I know our library subscribes the IEEE package, including all the IEEE journals but uh, uh, that package will not include the OA journals. So um, anyway, the authors need to pay um, as a flag rate, uh, which is about uh, $1,000, 1250 um, As far as the discount coupon, I already uh, mentioned that if we have this type of decision, uh, we will let uh, the community know as soon as possible. Great. Uh, now, David May in the U.S. says, uh, what is the most challenging issue that an OA journal faces today, and how would you cope with this challenge? Um, this is also a good question. I think um, most authors, uh, they decide to publish in OA journals, probably not about uh, uh, the citation, it's about the speed, because most of OA journals can review and publish papers very fast. However, the speed 
uh, may compromise uh, with the quality. Uh, based on my experience, if we uh, give authors more time to revise, uh, the paper quality can be improved. Or if we wait more time uh, for review comments, we can receive a more valuable or insightful comments to improve paper quality. So I think uh, the, ch the most uh, challenging issue is how to um, compromise or the balance, the speed and the quality. I think now um, we, we give uh, authors uh, one month or two, a uh, half months a uh, time to uh, revise. And we gave uh, reviews as three weeks, two weeks uh, to evaluate the papers. And we wait enough um, reviews to uh, received to uh, make a decision. So we try to make this type of balance. That's a great point. Um, uh, next up is Aline Samat in China, who asks, is there any change to the spe special issue calling policy? I, I know you touched on the special issue uh, changes, uh, but is there anything you want to elaborate on with this question? Uh, Colin, um, I think uh, I really uh, recommend um, you to uh, download the template of the um, special issue proposal. Um, we basically can, as I mentioned, basically we can comment as, as many special issues as we want. So there's no limitation. So as long as the topic is uh, within the scope of JSTARS, uh, we will be able to publish that special issue. And also, we um, will publish the papers right after the acceptance, so there's no delay. And also, the submission windows is about six months, so the uh, author, uh, potential authors have enough time to prepare uh, the manuscript. Uh, each special issue can have three uh, free papers and so on. So if you have any question, just uh, uh, just email me. Great. Uh, and then another question from Lindsay. Uh, glad to hear that JSTARS will be faster and cheaper. Do we need to use the new template for formatting the manuscripts? Um, the IEEE uh, requires to have uh, to use this double column, single space format uh, to uh, uh, to form as a manuscript. So we really wish the author can follow uh, that type of format. Um, so I think uh, we recommend the authors to use a new template to form as a manuscript. However, it's not uh, uh, the mandatory. But uh, no matter what, the paper should be in uh, the format of single space and two columns. Okay. Um, it looks like then we're at the uh, the end of the list of questions that have come in. Um, so I guess uh, final question to you is, uh, you know, what's your level of excitement about this? You know, this is a big change, and um, I'm sure there was a lot of deliberation going into it. Are, are you excited for the change? Um. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> about this change, but there's also lots of responsibility. I think probably uh, this is the uh, first journal, you know, the existing journal flipped into an OA. I think for other OA journals, they established from beginning as an OA. So we're going to have uh, some experience uh, to be accumulated and we may also learn some lessons and this experience and the lessons could be valuable to other journals who want to flip into OAs uh, in the near future. So um, there are lots of work to do but I think that should be uh, very worthwhile. Okay, uh, we did get one more question uh, okay. from Alejandro in Mexico. Uh, uh -huh. Are you planning to support 
some support to promote the publication of papers from developing countries in the new OA JSTARS model? Yeah, that is a very good question. Um, you know, um, one issue, one problem is that uh, previously authors can choose publish six page papers without paying anything. But now um, each paper, no matter how short it is, uh, it will cost one th more than $1,000. So we're going to look into this problem. I know IEEE has a policy for membership fee. So for members in developing countries, their membership fee can be uh, reduced. Um, however, for papers, for publications, uh, this is a little bit more complicated because the papers usually not have a sole author. It has uh, joint authors or multiple authors. So um, the Adcom committee and we also have this publication team. We were considered how to uh, help authors uh, in developing countries. And we also need to evaluate our financial situation. And hopefully we can uh, make some decision uh, within one year. Excellent. Um, so it looks like we are truly at the end of the questions now. Um, uh, any final remarks from you before we sign off and say goodbye? Oh, again, I, I want to uh, thank everybody uh, for your contribution to JSTARS. I really want you to uh, further contribute to JSTARS. And for those of you who um, have not submitted a paper to JSTARS before, um, I welcome your uh, submission and help review papers for JSTARS. OK, thank you. OK, great. And I just want to. Uh, thank the GRSS uh, for supporting these uh, monthly online uh, live streams. Uh, you can always find their website, grss-ieee.org. Uh, and of course, you can also get to the JSTARS uh, page uh, within the GRSS uh, uh, webinar. And so um, with that, just to make sure, nope, no more questions. and. So uh, thanks again, Jenny. I appreciate Thank you, you taking the time. And mm -hmm. thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Stay tuned for an announcement about next, next month's GRSS webinar. And uh, we will leave this recording up for the next 24 hours uh, to view on demand if you want to watch it again. Uh, and after that, it will transition into the GRSS Resource Center. So uh, thanks, everyone. And uh, have a great day, Jenny. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.